What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and in continuing my series of Disney movie reviews I'm here to let you know that Atlantis The Lost Empire is no perfect movie and it centers on Milo Fatch, a map maker and linguist who is constantly ridiculed by his peers for believing that Atlantis at the very least existed. But his persistence gets him hired by a group of explorers who hire him to translate this map that they found. And once they arrive at Atlantis, they discover the very surprising secrets as to why the city is still very much alive. This was a movie that I remember really enjoying as a kid. I saw it in theaters when it came out. I probably was five at that point, and it blew my mind. It was action-packed, it was suspenseful and scary at certain parts, and I was actually pretty amazed to see, growing up as an adult, that there are people who kind of look down on this one. Which is a real sur well, okay, it's not a huge surprise considering some of the complaints they have are pretty valid. It is a little thin on character development, story-wise, in terms of the message, it's pretty on the nose. But it was the execution of this movie and the way it was presented that to this day I still think is absolutely fantastic. For one, it was clear in this movie that Disney hired the voice actors based on their talent as opposed to their celebrity status, because other than Michael J. Fox, there really aren't any A-listers. You probably recognize a few voices from some other shows, but that's really about it. And all of these actors fit their character tropes like a glove, to the point where even when they are thinly written, their comedic timing, their line delivery for the more dramatic moments, is enough to sell the chemistry and the interactions between the characters that it's all you really need to root for them. Michael J. Fox is so good at bringing this lovable innocence to Milo. You genuinely believe over the course of this journey that this is the most exciting moments of his entire life. And once he realizes the true purpose of this mission, all the energy that he has left he puts into restoring the culture of Atlantis by any means by teaming up with Kida. And he has the absolute best scenes with her. She's played very well by Kree Summer. I really like the design that they gave her. And the two of them together is such a believable relationship because they have this shared thirst for the knowledge of Atlantis and the history of what exactly happened that caused them to disappear into the unknown. And that common ground that they build was easily the most believable relationship in the entire movie for sure. Just on a comedic standpoint, I love Don Novello as Vinny, and I actually found out while researching this movie that he never followed the script. He read it once in a while, he read each line, and once he was done, he completely improvised something different. So this is a wholly original performance that he's giving to the character, and honestly, he comes up with the best lines in the entire movie. Jacqueline Obrador, or Obradors, I apologize, I couldn't find any pronunciation pronunciations online, but she was really good as Audrey, the teenage mechanic. It was a little unbelievable at first, but she had this snarky personality to her that I really appreciated. Phil Morris from Seinfeld as the doctor was so quick. He had almost that James Woods type of delivery that apparently gave the animators a pain in the ass to draw, but his fast-paced energy and the lines that he was given in general were just really good and made him feel like the most genuine member of the team. And even in the only two or three scenes that he has, Leonard Nimoy makes a huge impression as the king of Atlantis because he's the character who has all the knowledge that these guys are looking for. And when he speaks, Nimoy, just through his delivery alone, brings this sense of wisdom, but also regret, remorse and a little bit of cynicism from the past, which we do learn from him eventually. But I'm going to get this completely out of the way. The thing that I love the most about this movie, like any good Disney movie, is the animation. The visual style that this movie gets in regards to the characters and the landscapes gives it this unique comic book look that really fits the mythology of the story very nicely. And the scope for this movie is absolutely huge. There are moments where it's a lot bigger than Hunchback of Notre Dame. That's a hard thing to accomplish, but they managed to do it by filming it in 70mm to get that old-fashioned look. And it really goes to show, especially, one, when we actually do come across Atlantis for the first time. Everything looks bright, beautiful, very colorful. 
And during one of the best Disney climaxes ever, this really fast-paced aerial dogfight over a volcano brought a ton of energy and some creative kills because this is a surprisingly violent Disney movie. And yes, it's true. It's mostly background characters who we don't really get to spend time with that get killed. But nonetheless, it's a change of pace for Disney that honestly, to this day, is still kind of a big risk. And one thing that I hadn't noticed before about this movie is that the mythology and the rules of how it works, we experience those in the exact same way as Milo and his crew members. We know as little as they do. When something happens, the scene usually plays out just through the visuals and through James Newton Howard's amazing score, one of his best. What's so great about that score is that he accomplished it by not thinking of it as an animated movie, but as a live action film. And his use of Indonesian instruments like chimes and gongs really accomplished something unique and original. But as per the mythology, when once a scene is over with and something completely amazing has happened and you're like, how did that happen? We don't really get any... We get one big explanation scene from Leonard Nimoy, but that's really about it. The rest is up to us to decide how it works, and the sense of mystery is what makes Atlantis such a magical and fascinating movie to watch. The only real problems I have with Atlantis are... I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of John Mahoney as the guy who is financing the journey, because he his voice acting brings a lot of energy to his character, so much so that I was really disappointed that he only had like two or three scenes, and that was about it. And I hadn't thought of, I never thought of this before, but isn't it weird that the only Atlantis characters that we really get to focus on are the king and the princess? Because, honestly, I would have liked one or two civilians to come across to join them on the battle. Because, in the final battle, there are Atlantean citizens there, but they're not really the focus. But outside of that, Atlantis The Lost Empire is one of my favorite Disney movies, and one of, in my opinion, their most underrated. Because, even though it is thinly written on the surface... The presentation, thanks to the production quality of the music, the breathtaking animation, the really fun action sequences, the great voice cast, and the clever world building are what make it stand out amongst any other Disney movie that I've seen so far. And for that reason, I'm going to give Atlantis The Lost Empire a 4.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you've seen Atlantis, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more Disney reviews. And be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.